All right, so today I'm going to be kind of doing a completely different method than the one I showed you before. And I've just been watching some videos on uh, YouTube and kind of looking at various ways people do it. So, you know, they're pretty similar, but if you want to try this uh, instead, there's a couple of things that you might get out of this that um, maybe the other one didn't have. So first off, I'm going to start with uh, my palette. And this is kind of one of the big differences. How do you spell palette? I don't know that I saw um, between these uh, two methods. And this one is basically, it's more like actually painting. This would be more like classic painting techniques that you're not really taking advantage of. Well, you are, the digital aspect, but you're, it's more like a paintbrush. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a paintbrush and I'm going to load it up with solid colors down here in the corner. It doesn't really matter where you put it, actually. And let's say those are going to be my lights. And then maybe for my darks, I am going to go down into, and I'm just kind of looking at my own hand and trying to figure out where those colors are. So let me maybe right about there. And maybe I have some um, kind of in between areas, like for my uh, wrinkles and that sort of thing. I'm just kind of looking at where those might land. And I can always, you know, adjust these if I need mm -hmm. to. But let's say that's kind of like the wrinkles and things like that. Um, and then maybe I want one that's like really dark. Just, oops, move this out of the way. So there's that. And I'm going to want to go the other direction as well. So let me go back to this color. And I, I see that I have kind of some yellows, more highlights in uh, my skin. So let me try playing around with something like that. And maybe for like my fingernails, I'll just pull it up to here. Looks about right. Eh, probably a little lighter. Our eyes can see really well the difference between darks and not so darks. It's really hard for them to see the difference between lights and not so lights. Uh, lights kind of tend to blend together in our um, vision. And then maybe let's tr get some. Um, I'm gonna want some like reds for uh, just kind of a overlayer of like blood vessels and things like that. So let's do that. So this should be all the colors that I pretty much need. Oh, and blues for veins. I, I do have some a little bit of blue on my uh, skin. So I'm just going to pull that. It's probably pretty close to this range as far as I can see. All right, so there's my color palette. And then what I'm going to do is go down to, to layer one. And I want to make sure that I change my eyedropper to show all layers right here if it's not already because I'm going to be using this palette to draw stuff. So um, starting off, I'm going to do a under sketch. So I'll create another layer. And really, you're just going to use these three layers. You're not going to do shades and stuff on different layers. So I'm going to call this my under layer, my sketch, basically. And I'm going to use, um, I guess I'll use a pencil tool, black. That's fine. Maybe, I don't know, maybe gray with just a little bit of softness to it. And here I'm just going to take the time to sketch out my hand. Now, again, I want to use this entire thing, so maybe I'll just kind of like mark the boundaries of uh, some of mm -hmm. the areas. I'm just kind of, I'm looking at proportion here. I'm trying to think about, you know, the distance and the length of all the different uh, parts of my fingers. Um, how long are they compared to how close they are together? How far do they stretch out? You know, does one finger go further than the other? And uh, again, you draw what you see, not what you think it should look like. So starting off with the sketch, and I really probably should have started you guys off with the sketch phase. Um, you know, I know some painters will jump into the blob of color, but I think that this is pretty classically 
uh, the best method to get started. So let's see here. Just trying to flesh out the major shape of my hand. Doesn't have to be perfect right now. And what's nice is the sketching. It, it just there's something kind of freeing about um, being able to sketch like this and not have it be perfect. And really just paying attention to like you know this limb right here. How does that match up to what's going on over here? If I look, okay. So at the beginning of my pinky is kind of like halfway through my thumb. So I want to make sure that my thumb gets uh, drawn accordingly. And, you know, how far is it from the distance between this? This line right here, you know, the shape that it makes kind of comes down like that. Oops. That line should go in a little bit more. And something like this. And I can see that I, I got some of the proportions pretty off, as you can see by my sleeve over here. I definitely put that in the wrong spot. So it's okay to, you know, kind of come back and make revisions. This is a pretty important step. I do recommend spending a good deal of time on it. And it's more, it's probably more like this. And there we go. And then if you want to draw, you know, those uh, lines, try to pay attention to the bones. Like rather than a blob like that for your finger, do this, you know, because your, your finger is broken into three different bones right there. So it's going to it's going to look better if you can break it up like that as opposed to um, what I've seen a few of you doing is just uh, there's my finger and it just kind of looks like a cheesy puff or whatever you call those Fritos Cheetos. Um, there we go. And again, I'm just constantly looking at my fingers. I'm not I'm not just guessing as to what this looks like. And now, now I've moved my finger around so everything's different, but um, got a little shadow over here. It's a little bit of a separation between these fingers, so I'm going to put some shadows there. And some wrinkle. This actually probably went in too far. I'm going to, and my thumb I think goes up a little bit higher this way. It's okay if it's looking sketchy. All right, now from here, Let's go, let's say that that's our underlayer and we're fine with that. Let me just add my uh, jacket real quick. Kind of goes off like that and like that. Okay. So on layer one, now I'm going to switch to my paintbrush. And I'm essentially just going to use this color picker right here to kind of block in the major colors and the shadows. Um, so I'll start off with what I would assume is my base color right here. And I'm just going to take the time to sketch this. And I'm going to try to stay in the lines as much as I can. And this is just kind of my base. And then let me just, rather than taking the time to do the whole thing kind of sloppy and slow, let me just focus on one little area. And let's just see how I can make this uh, work using my palette. Now my, my palette's now gone because I can't see it, but I can move it. That's what's nice about it being on a separate layer here. So let me just take the time now to uh, tr try to really flesh out this part of it. And we'll eventually turn off this layer, so we'll just see this. So on this layer one, I got my paintbrush out, and I'm going to just kind of fill in this area. Make sure that the hardness is up pretty high, because you don't want to have soft, fuzzy edges. Maybe on this part, 100%. Um, just so that you have a very clear shape for your finger. And something like this. And right now I'm not even looking at my finger, which I should be. That's a mistake I'm making. Uh, you should always be looking at what the actual finger looks like rather than just, oh, hey, I'm going to fill this in because that's not going to get you the best results. And what I see right here is that it kind of curves down there. And I'm really trying to, to be um, as careful as possible. My nail kind of comes up at an angle like that. So I'm using the eraser right now to kind of help shape that. I should have done it right the first time, but that's okay. We're all allowed to make mistakes. And then I see that the finger kind of tends to go a little bit lower here. And it's going to... Uh, it's got kind of this curve right here. This is the level of attention that I'm giving this. And then it kind of comes down even further right there. 
All right, so we started off with kind of blocking it out, and maybe now I'll come in with some uh, pinks and <clears throat> and just kind of, I'm looking at my finger, I'm looking at the spots where does it seem a little bit redder. Nice big brush. I'm going to go down to my hardness here. You should constantly be adjusting your flow, your hardness, and your size. Um, and let me just throw in some of those pinks here. Just looking at my finger, trying to match that. And it looks like before it gets too dark, it does tend to get kind of pinker in areas. Uh, at the very top right here, I see that there's kind of a reddish area. I'm not really liking the way that I blended this. I probably should have used a lower flow. Let's go ahead and add some of the shadows now. Um, starting with uh, this one, I'm just going to kind of come in here. And I see a little bit of shade up there. I'm just looking all over. Where am I seeing the shade? I see a little bit. And we're starting off with the, the big picture, and then we're going to add the fine details later. So don't worry about um, you know every wrinkle. Don't even try to do those just yet because you're going to need a soft brush for that. And um, oh, I was looking at the wrong finger. Oh, well. OK, I'm back. Let's see that little area right there. And we kind of fill that in. And then I'm going to go in and just add some highlights. Uh, let's see. So right here. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like this is a little bit too white. I think I kind of need a yellow, more yellowish uh, one. So I'm going to come in here and just go a little higher there. Let's make that on my palette. Pull that flow up. So that gives me one more color to work with. So I'm back here using this color. Go back down to my flow very low. And let's add um, some of those highlights. Just kind of see how those turn out. Okay, there's a big old chunk of light right there. Uh, let's see. And everything kind of looks blurry right now, so we are eventually going to need to add those fine details. I, I do see like a shine of light right here, so I'm just going to add. And it actually, I was looking again. The shine of light actually extends um, to the top here and then kind of curves down through the top portion of my finger and then kind of here just kind of goes back and forth. A little bit more of a shine right there. And definitely on the nail. I'm going to focus on that later. And then I just need to come down to the bottom here and get these really dark areas. And it's okay if I spill into the white. I can, I'm going to probably come back with a, uh, later on and clean that up. And I, because The reason I don't want to be too careful here is because I want a big brush because I want it, these to blend. Um, and that's not going to happen if I use a small brush. So now I can just come back in and Clean it up with an eraser. Again, I'm paying attention to the shape that I actually see. Okay, I like that. Now I'm going to come in with uh, the details of the nail. And that, what I'm looking at, is it looks kind of like a reddish. So let me come in here with a small brush, nice slow flow. And I'm just going to take the time to... Uh, yeah, that looks about right. Probably need a little bit bigger brush now to just kind of blend it. It's probably darker than it needs to be, so let me come in with this one and just kind of push it back a little bit, back to where it was. Um, I feel like I'm not getting the reds that I need. I think I also need to add another color to my palette, which is more of a darker red right about there. So let's add that. Oh, full flow. Constantly going back and forth with that, as you can see. All right, so let me pull that color again. Nice slow flow. And I'm going to see some of that there, here. Lower flow. And a little bit more there. Ah, screw that area up. All right. Okay, so now I see a little shadow. There's, there's just the tiniest little shadow right here underneath my nail. Let me add that. Little shadow. Just kind of curves off to the side. Okay, now let's come in and kind of shape out the nail. Uh, let me use a little harder brush. Pull this flow up just a touch. Smaller. And I'm going to add 
the white right there as you can see beautiful and then it kind of comes in uh, this way there's a little shine right there and I see this white area right in front of that dark area I created earlier and then this whole area is just a just tends to be a little bit lighter so let's come in and just kind of brighten this whole thing up with the nail okay now as far as like these really harsh lines I am gonna now need to come in and uh, get a little bolder with my lines I'm gonna need to pull this hardness up and just look at the areas I see a little area right there a little too much right above that spot that just kind of darkens up a bit before it gets uh, lighter and then there's a little shadow right there same thing here and everything notice everything looks kind of blurry and I'm gonna have to fix that just by adding more um, more detail I see that my part of my nail actually comes up right here All right, my finger. You can actually see a little bit more of my finger. I'm going to use the color picker just to pick whatever colors are around here because the nail actually comes back a little bit there. Uh, I see that I need to come with my eraser and just kind of clean up this area. I probably need to go into my eraser settings now and pull the softness and the size down as I'm adding these details. But, man, i got to say that's starting to look like a finger. Um, and then from here, you know, it's just more details. It's still really fuzzy, so I can come in and I can go in with those lines, and I can, uh, that's actually lighter. I can get my light right here. I can come in with my lines and just, oops, way too much flow. And just use um, smaller and smaller brushes to add more and more detail until things start to kind of come together. I see there's a darker area right here, so let me pull that. For some reason, the nail kind of darkens up right there. Um, slightly bigger brush. Remember, this is uh, uh, pressure sensitive, these brushes. That's pretty cool. Um, and then as far as like wrinkles and stuff, you got small brush. And I'm just going to kind of come in. And, and again, I'm just looking at where do I actually see wrinkles see some here and here and the thing about wrinkles is not only do they darken the light but they also um, if this makes any sense they also uh, give you highlights and I'll show you what I mean so when I if I do like a wrinkle right here and say here and here right above those wrinkles let me fill in this area right there too with a really low flow there's just kind of this rounded I don't know what you'd call it but right there um, but as I as I do that with the wrinkles you're also gonna want to come in with the opposite so let me pull a light brush out like this one and they do highlights kinda like right around the wrinkles so right there one of the ways that we show light and, and I mean Light and dark is the contrast. Um, we can make it appear as if there's movement, as if there's uh, crevices and stuff, not only by darkening, but also by lightening. Um, it's that contrast which is really going to do it for you. So as I make more wrinkles, again, you want to lighten up the areas around it. And I, I just pay attention to the shape of your wrinkles, you know. Make sure that you're making them look natural. And let me get an even lighter color just so I can really exaggerate what I'm talking about with this shine. I'm just paying attention to what I see. Yeah. So there we go. Not a bad little start. Um, I see there's some issues, you know, with the curve and some of the colors are kind of looking bruised. So taking more time going back and forth um, but it, basically what you want to do is start with that level that basic level of detail for the whole hand and then come through and start adding over and over and over again until basically until you run out of time I could easily spend three hours on this uh, and I think that this is the method that uh, I'm getting the best results from so I would encourage you to use this 
um, and just kind of experiment and have fun. But yeah, this palette thing, cool idea. Go for it. Thanks for watching, guys.